Less Than Zero by Stuart Murphy. Less Than Zero. All of Perry's friends had ice scooters. They could zip to school and zoom to the ice rink. Fuzzy could do figure eights. Baldy could even do flips. Perry wanted a scooter too, but his dad said Perry would have to save nine clams and buy one for himself. And I don't have a clam to my name, Perry moaned. Not one clam. On Monday morning, Perry's mom said, I will pay you four clams to trim the ice in front of the house. That's hard work, said Perry. And that's a lot of clams, said mom. Perry trimmed all afternoon. By the end of the day, Perry had four clams of his own. He picked up a pad of paper and decided to make a graph to keep track of how many clams he had. Perry wrote Sunday and Monday at the top. He made marks for four clams up the side. He made a big dot below Sunday at zero and another big dot below Monday on the line that showed four clams. Then he drew a line to connect the two dots. Wow, I've gone from zero to four clams in just one day, he thought. On Tuesday morning, Perry's friend Fuzzy called. Do you want to go to the ice circus? He asked. It costs five clams. The ice circuits had seal acrobats and polar bear clowns and giant snow cones. Perry wanted to go more than anything, but I only have four clams, he told Fuzzy. I can loan you one clam until next week, Fuzzy said. The ice circus was fantastic. When Perry got home, he took out his pad of paper. He had spent four clams plus one more of fuzzies. He wrote Tuesday at the top of the graph, then he counted down five lines to show the clams he had spent. He wrote minus one below the zero. Then he made a big dot below Tuesday at the minus one line and drew a line from Monday's dot to Tuesday's. Gosh, thought Perry, I went from four clams to minus one. That's even less than zero. At the end of ice skating practice the next day, the fishy tree truck was parked right by the gate. All of Perry's friends went zipping over on their scooters. Come on, said Baldy. Let's get a treat. But I don't have any clams, said Perry, and I already owe Fuzzy one clam. Well, I can loan you two clams for a fishy float, Baldy said. Perry couldn't resist. Sardines, my favorite, he said. It was delicious. That night, Perry took out his pad of paper again. Perry counted down two more lines to show the clams he had borrowed from Baldy. Below minus one, he wrote minus two and minus three. Then he wrote Wednesday at the top, made a big dot on the minus three line and drew a line from Tuesday dot to Wednesdays. Oh no, thought Perry, now I'm three clams less than zero. The next morning, Perry didn't go outside. All his friends were playing on their ice scooters. It was no fun just watching. Perry lay down on the floor and sighed. Then something under the couch caught his eye. It was a clam. Well, he thought, maybe there are more clams hidden around the house. Perry started a clam search. He looked everywhere, behind the rewarmerator, over the cooling oven, even in the big ice chest. By the end of the day, he had found eight clams, and his dad said he could keep them. Perry ran to his room and took out his pad.
Perry wrote Tuesday at the top. Then he counted up eight lines to show the clams he had found and made a dot below. Thursday at the line that meant five clams. He drew a line from Wednesday's dot to Thursday's. When I pay back the three clams I owe Baldy and Fuzzy, I'll only have five clams left, laughed Perry. I wish I hadn't borrowed those clams. The next afternoon, Perry put all his clams in his pocket and went out to meet Baldy and Fuzzy. But when he reached into his pocket, there was nothing in it. He felt and felt, but all he could feel was a great big hole. Oh no, moaned Perry, I can't believe it. I lost eight whole clams. Fuzzy and Baldy helped him look until it started to get dark. But there wasn't a clam in sight. When he got home, Perry went into his room. He took out his pad sadly. Perry wrote Friday on the top. He counted down eight lines and make a big dot below Friday on the minus three line. Then he counted Thursday's dot to Friday's. I'm right back where I was on Wednesday, thought Perry. So long, Scooter, he whispered as he drifted off to sleep. In the morning, Mr. Spike from next door was in the kitchen when Perry woke up. Hello there, Perry, said Mr. Spike. Remember when you waved to me yesterday while I was shoveling snow? Uh oh, Perry answered sleepily. Look what I found after you left. Mr. Spike reached into his pocket and handed eight clams to Perry. Perry ran to get his pad. Perry counted up eight lines and made a big dot on the line that showed five clams. Then he connected Friday's dot to Saturday's. After he paid back Fuzzy and Baldy, he would have five clams left. Not only that, added Mr. Spike, your parents told me that you want to buy an ice scooter and I need some help shoveling snow. How many clams do you need? I'll give them to you now and you can work them off later. The scooter cost nine clams. Perry counted up four lines and made another big dot on the nine line. He connected the dots. I need four more clams to buy the scooter, Perry told Mr. Spike. Mr. Spike handed Perry four clams. If you shovel snow for me for four days, We'll be even, he said. It was Sunday again and the fishy treats truck was open for business. Get your fishy fries here, he helped the seal. Only three clams. Want some? asked Fuzzy. I can loan you some clams, offered Baldy. No way, said Perry. I already have four clams less than zero. That's what I owe Mr. Spike. But I do have a cool new scooter and a cool new job too. And Perry scooted off to shovel snow.